Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here with Redmond Presbyterian Church on Sunday, November 15th. Uh, it's so good to be together. As always, thank you for taking the moment to log in there on your computer, uh, to sit there on the dinner table or the breakfast table. Um, it's great to have you, and, uh, and we're grateful for this space, uh, which is safe and available to us uh, to be able to worship together in community. A few quick announcements I want to share with us uh, this morning, and um, I'm going to direct your attention as much as possible back to our church website, uh, www.redmondprez.org, and encourage you to, to learn more about these things there. But a few things coming up in the coming days. Uh, by now, you've heard about our, our alternative gift market, which we normally do around this time of the year for as kind of a Christmas present. Thing that allows us to support important organizations like 10,000 Villages, Habitat for Humanity, Heifer International Project, as well as uh, local projects like our ongoing uh, food box program, uh, our work with Friends of Youth. All of these things are things you can support through our alternative gift market. This year we're doing that online, so it's all on our church website. You can find the links and the, uh, the wish lists and the ways to support folks there. We hope you do, as that's such an important way that we can care for our community and our world in this time. Other things coming up in the next few weeks as we head into December, uh, there's going to be a, a wreath-making party online uh, for families and people of all ages, so absolutely everyone, uh, in other words, at the church is welcome to. Uh, you can have your own wreath or you can order one online. Um, and we'll get on online together. We'll have a, a, a time of, of prayer and, and assemble our wreaths together. Uh, there will also be a Phillips family Christmas concert coming up in December. Uh, there will also be an evening of fun Christmas trivia hosted by myself and my wife Erica online. Uh, prizes will be available. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, lots of things coming up. Uh, in the coming month, and we look forward to uh, all of these new and creative ways that we get to be the church. One, two more announcements, sorry. Uh, if you haven't filled out your, your pledge card, you still can do that. Last week, we kind of marked the end of our stewardship campaign, but we know uh, that many of us make those types of financial decisions as we get closer to the end of the year, and so if you haven't filled out that pledge card, we haven't made it to our goal yet, and we want to encourage you to continue uh, thoughtfully filling out those cards and, and supporting the work that God is doing here at Redmond Prez. So please feel free to mail those in, drop them through the mail slot here at the church. Um, lots of ways that you can, can do that safely. The last announcement I want to make is a personal one, uh, and it is uh, directed to Cindy Pearson. Many of you know our good friend Cindy Pearson, who um, is a, a faithful member of our congregation. Uh, and in addition to that is kind of our resident gardener. She um, often beautifies uh, the flower beds right outside the front door of the church and does a ton of uh, gardening around our, our building. Um, I see her often when I'm in the office and, and we're so grateful for, for Cindy's work. Well, at the end of this month, Cindy and her husband Mark are moving down to Olympia and we are going to miss them very much, uh, but we want to send them off uh, with our love and our appreciation. So Cindy, I know you're out there listening. Uh, friends, if you were all here today, we would uh, join together at our coffee hour and, and, and toast our coffee and, and, and tell Cindy how much we're going to miss her and how much we appreciate her. So please take a second to do that in whatever way you can, whether it's in the chat bar or at our post-worship uh, Zoom time today, uh, or just pick up the phone this week and give Cindy a call and uh, and and, and share all those things with her then. All right. Thanks so much, Cindy. Also, Cindy told me this past week on the phone when I talked to her that she would be happy for someone else to t fill her shoes as, uh, as the, the, the local gardener. So if you are somebody who's interested, I'm sure she'd love to, to share some of her, uh, her tips with you. Okay, friends, it is our opportunity now uh, to worship God together uh, in this space. So wherever you come from, however uh, wonderful or difficult your week has been, uh, God welcomes all of us and calls us uh, to God's side. So let's enter into worship in prayer. Let's do this together. Please join me in our call to worship. 
Come, let us worship and bow our hearts. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. For we belong fully to God. In this place, let us acknowledge all that God has done in our lives and respond in joyful worship. Casting my cares aside, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me is good, it's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Putting my fears aside, I'm leaving my doubts behind. I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me is good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. All my days I'll live for you. All my days I'll live for you. I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. All my days I'll live for you. All my days I'll live. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. Giving you my fears and sorrows. When you me, I will follow. Trusting in what you say. Today is a day. Today is a day. Today is a day. Today is a day. Brothers and sisters, our moment now of confession is not a way for us to plead for God's mercy. Or forgiveness but because we know as we read in Romans that nothing nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus but in this moment of confession uh, in freedom we admit that that we have not loved God with our whole heart soul and mind we've certainly not loved our neighbor as ourselves and so desiring to follow Jesus and to experience the fullness of life that he calls us to, 
we confess these ways that we have, have missed the mark, and we ask for God's love to bring us back to his side. So let us pray together in this time. Loving God, you call us to be your voices in this world, and yet we stay silent. You call us to be your hands in this world, to do the important work of love, and justice, and service, and yet we keep them hidden. You call us to be your feet in this world, and yet we go our own way. When we meet those who are doubting and say nothing, forgive us. When we meet those who need your touch and do nothing, forgive us. When we are called to, to take up our cross and to follow you and we carry nothing, Lord, forgive us. Breathe life into these bones. Bring freedom to these lives so that we might declare with heart and soul and voice that you are our Lord and our God. And in you, there is new life. There is healing. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Hear it and let it redefine who you are as a child of God. You are loved, and we know that love is the way. When you love God, you love others. When you truly lay down your life for others, you lay down your life for God. So give yourself to God by serving others. Know that in God's love there is forgiveness, there is healing, there is reconciliation. For all of this, we say in Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Yes, 
Good morning. Hey, guys. It's good to see you this morning. Let me jump in by reading for us our verse from Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let me pray for us. Loving and faithful God, we are so grateful to be together this morning to share in your word and to be challenged by it so that our hearts are transformed to be like your heart. We love you. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, we continue in our sermon series, Hearts Like Jesus, together with uh, both churches. And, and really what we're studying here is how might our lives and our hearts be transformed by Jesus Christ in a way that really allows us to live like Jesus in deeper ways. And I'm drawn to this passage because it's a hard one. And, and we are actually recording this sermon before the election results are in. And so we've had just some wonderful conversation about truly what does this mean? And, and why is it so, why does Jesus put these, these ideas into our hearts and in our minds at really critical times? So um, let me first just talk a little bit about, we're in the Sermon on the Mount, we're continuing with that. We're just two weeks away from Advent. And so um, we're kind of wrapping up this heart, heart like Jesus section and, we're, and we're, we're wrapping up Christ's thoughts for how we should live. So in this passage, Jesus gives really specific instruction about judgment. And he gives it in, in what feels like a harsh way. It lands in a harsh way. It's all about, you know, what you, what you give, you get. And trying to form a context around not judging others. It's a very specific and directed word for us. So I'd love to open up with what you both are thinking and how it lands with you and, and maybe what you gain from it. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in right away. I, you know, I've... I've heard this passage a lot of times and and so often it, it feels like the um, the default understanding of, of uh, when we hear don't judge so that you may not be judged it's it's kind of this like hands-off uh, approach to life and and everyone like you can't tell me anything um, don't don't say anything about how I live my life and I won't say anything about how you live like your life and it's this unfortunately I think can lead to this sense uh, this it can foster kind of disconnection, right? Like we'll all just kind of live in this false um, politeness where we kind of smile, but but we don't ever actually bump into each other and 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 have to do hard work together. Um, it's helpful to understand in this passage when when Jesus is using that word judge, he's using uh, the Greek word which which actually can also be translated as to condemn. Uh, and so it's this, it's not this idea that that we don't have opinions about each other that that we're not connected to one another because if we stick with the passage right he he says you know you have logs in your eye you have specks in your eye like do you you both have work to do um, he's not saying like oh, everyone's fine just keep moving along with these things in your eye uh, but it's it's this idea of not condemning people of uh, even even harshly in in that language it's condemning to hell it's this like final judgment kind of language and and Jesus is saying don't don't make that final decision right that that belongs to God alone but but there is still, and we see this throughout the, the, um, the Sermon on the Mount, there is this undercurrent that's consistent of communal belonging. We do belong to each other. We do have something to say to one another about 
when, when we're doing things in our lives that are destructive and, and we want the best for each other. But, but this encouragement to not kind of make that final decision, that's where I think we, I know is a challenge, right? To, when, when, we, when we do that to people, when we, when we see a, the way someone believe, thinks or acts or, uh, and we just write them off completely, that person is, is this, right? I, I know everything I need to know about them. Um, that's where I think we, we, we get ourselves into trouble. We, 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 we separate, right? And, and that's what I think Jesus is trying to, trying to avoid for us, trying to invite us into community, not, not disunity. Mm -hmm. Um, no, that's really good. I, I, I always, you know, go back to this, uh, one of the, the couple of the Beatitudes where it starts to talk about mercy and going the extra mile. And, you know, I always, uh, resonate with this story, uh, analogy of how the Israelites were an occupied people, you know, and Rome, Rome was the one who was occupying the Israelites. And, and they had this. They had these laws where a centurion, a Roman soldier, um, could ask any any Israelite, uh, any any occupied person, to carry their like eighty pound, seventy pound, I don't know, backpack that had all this stuff on there for for a mile, and without any question, you know, whatever the people were doing, they had to drop whatever they were doing. It could be anything. They could have been. They could have been grocery shopping. They had drop their groceries, right? And then carry this backpack for one mile. And, you know, uh, and most of the time they're, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, the Israelite is, is counting every step, knows exactly where one mile is because I'm sure this happened all the time. And so then it was like, no conversation was happening there. No, and there was, I, I'm, I'm guessing inside the mind of the Israelite is just judgment after judgment about how they hate this person. How could they do this? You know, all this stuff. And, and then they get to that mile and then they're probably like drop the pack because that's, that was their obligation. That was all they had to do. Right. And, and Austin, you were kind of talking about that, right? Like there's, that was all they had to do. And then, and then they give them this like stink eye and give them the glare of like hate and judgment. And, and then they walk away and then that's all they had to do. But uh, you know, the whole, the whole, you know, beatitude is about, now, what will you, what if you turned around to the centurion <clears throat> and was like, hey, I'll, I'll walk, I'll go another one, I'll go another mile for you, <clears throat> right? Uh, and then if the Israelite, you know, the centurion is probably just like looking at him like, uh, are you crazy? Like, you know, are you, are you nuts? You know, you've done your obligation. And then so, the, so then the Israelite, you know, could you imagine now uh, how hearts are broken, barriers are, are broken down at that point, conversations look different. Um, and that, and, and in that second mile, you know, what was, what was really touching was, you know, there were a lot of, uh, Roman centurions who actually came to know Christ during that time. And I'm guessing that it was because of this, like second mile, it was about this compassion. It was about this mercy. It was about, uh, not actually judging, uh, you know, not actually having those judgments in the first mile, but actually breaking down those judgments and, and being able to listen and to say like, hey, you know what, we're going to, I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to, I'm gonna, I want to know who you are. I want, you know, and it's about that. And it's about what you, so you were saying, Austin, about that community, that this is actually a community thing. And it's a community thing with people that you don't want to be in community with, that you're judging, right? <coughs> so, so that's that's kind of where I resonate with this passage. It's it's, and it's not about um, you know, wasting your time, but it's about um, that this mile that you went was actually something that gave you life, and then the second mile is now what what God is actually calling us to do. Hmm. I like that first mile, second mile analogy. And it, it, I mean, I like both of what everything that uh, both of you said is resonating in this reality that what this passage is, it's a call to mercy and compassion. Yep. It's a call to see others as Christ sees us all the time, no matter what, even if, even if we feel disdain for something to let it break our hearts. 
hurts and yeah. to let let ourselves feel that lament and enter in with compassion and with mercy so that lives are transformed on both sides not just their transformation and ours and but ours and i was uh when i first read this passage i was thinking about uh, at our wedding when peter and i got married it was this beautiful scene and this you know this fairy tale you know, lights and it, it was winter and it was warm and cozy. And we, there we are ready to make our commitment with all of our close friends around us. And um, it was just this beautiful moment. And then the pastor, Dave Rohr, Reverend Dave Rohr, who married us, he read this passage, uh, blessed those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly don't claim to be wiser than you are and he goes on and then he ended with beloved never avenge yourselves but leave room for the wrath of god mm -hmm. and everyone was this like this really uncomfortable like kind of some <laughs> laughter like aren't we at a wedding he's gonna talk about the wrath of god and it was i mean it was peter it was an unforgettable moment for peter and i that we referenced a lot because it was this call and this reminder in that moment that actually we are not the redeemer and that we don't need to judge each other or to deal harshly with each other. I think he even said, you know, the, the, the role of God has been filled. You don't need to try to fill it yourself. <laughs> it's not you. Yeah. It's not you. And I loved that because I, I mean, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but in this COVID times, right, we're in close quarters with people that we love, right? We're home all day. And there's this tendency to sort of judge how even we all do things like, oh, you do it that way. Like you empty the dishwasher that way, or you, <laughs> you know, we're seeing each other up close. And I, so I love this reminder that this passage, it's for those who are the closest to us all the way to those who are, we would consider our enemies or people who agree, who don't agree with anything we agree with. Um, the call's the same to enter with compassion and with mercy. That's a challenge. It really is. When you were, when you were saying that, it just struck me that, um, you know, the, the, the call to compassion and to what you're describing of, of, of making room uh, for the wrath of God, basically saying there is, there is a savior and it's not me, you know, God has that role uh, to play, but our role is, is compassion. You said it a second ago, Becky, it, it draws us into places of being brokenhearted uh, for the other, right? And, and seeing um, with a sense of grace and compassion and curiosity uh, what it is that about them that's different that, that we would want to more naturally judge. And, and it, what just occurred to me when you said that was, well, no wonder we're quick to judge. Judging's easier, right? Like it lets us off the hook um, if, if you do something and I disagree with it and I can just judge you and just be like, oh, you know, Becky is, is that, then I don't have to, I don't have to have a hard conversation. I don't have to stick in to, you know, and, and, and listen to you. Okay. I, I can just, I can just, you know, move on and, and to stay in it, to say, gosh, I, I don't understand, you know, how this person could think this way, be like this, um, and to draw near. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's hard and vulnerable work. It's, um, but as we've seen throughout the, the, throughout the Sermon on the Mount, it's, it's that real life that Christ is calling us to, right? Like this is genuine community and relationship. It's hard. It, it can be messy. It can ask so much of us, but as you just said in, in that story, about your your marriage like you know this this story is about your wedding but but that's the work you and Peter have done in mm -hmm. your marriage and it's what brings you two together right in 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 love and and that's hard work but so important yeah no and you know uh also when after the both of you guys were talking about what I was thinking about was like wow judgment is all about power oh yeah right having power mm -hmm. over someone else Right. So, and, and that justifies your power over, over that person by judging them. And so, and, and it's that struggle where, um, where actually what Christ is talking about when the Beatitudes is about humility, it's about humbling yourself to the point where you're saying, Hey, can you teach me what you're doing? Or 
teach me the way that you do it rather than here, let me show you, <laughs> right? Let me show you how to do that. Or, uh, you know, that's where the fighting happens because you don't, you're not being able to see uh, the other person uh, for who they are or for how they do, or, you know, the way that they want to do it. But you're, you're always like um, saying no, my way or no way. Right. And that, that is no way for relationship. That is no way for community. Uh, there's no, there's no, um, there's no, act, there's no doors that open for any kind of relationship to happen if it's always your way. And if yep. you're the, if you're always the one that's judging, mm -hmm. then, uh, then you will be alone and lonely for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and to be honest, when you think about society and how, how society is so alone and, and have that longing, uh, uh, you know, with social media, with all this stuff, there's so much judgment going on in the world today with social media. And you wonder why people are so alone. Well, and it's interesting because when, when we think about that, you know, th this call to understand with compassion, the other, what came to my mind is all the time we're always saying like, oh, I don't, I'm, why even have that conversation? No one's going to change their mind. No one's going to change their mind. And I don't think that's true. And I don't think like the goal isn't to change their mind to your way or for you to change them my way. The goal is for us to be transformed. Maybe there's a totally different way, yeah. but I've changed my mind about a lot of things yeah. during hard conversations. And so understanding like, why do you think that? I mean, we are, I, I, regardless of what happens with the election, all I keep thinking when I watch the news and I've been bit limiting it is, we are divided. We are divided. Yep. And so how, if we don't ever understand why, why, like, why are we divided, then how can we ever come together in a new way? And I think you could apply this to politics. You can apply it to issues of race. You could apply it to your home, to your marriage, to raising children. You could apply it to church. Yeah. You know, do we do things this way or that way? Mm -hmm. Unless we seek to understand and enter with compassion and mercy and remember we're not right because i think it's about power but i also think it's about being right i think we're tired and when you're tired it's just easier to be right so you don't have to like give any more energy um if we don't do this work with it that christ is calling us to do we're never going to get to new places together mm -hmm. yeah you know it um when you were just saying that, that, that work of, it's not about being right or changing the other person's mind, but perhaps there's something else uh, about transformation. Absolutely. Like I, I was thinking, you know, in, in this moment in our history, if it's, it's easy to judge somebody who votes differently than us, it's easy to, you know, when, when we hear, um, you know, concepts of, of, of Black Lives Matter and, and, and perhaps somebody has a reaction one way or the other to that, it, it, it makes me think a little bit of some of our previous sermons where we've said, hey, when Jesus says, don't worry, uh, maybe a helpful spiritual discipline is go to those places of worry and, and bring those to Christ, right? Like, be honest about your worry. This might be another one of those places, right, where it seems like we know what that feeling is that wells up within us when we think, oh, that person, right? I'm just going to judge them. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't vote the same way as them. I don't see issues of race the same way they do. You know, I'm, they're, I'm not going to waste my time with them. When that sense kind of wells up in us, perhaps, well, I wouldn't say perhaps, that's exactly the place for us to, to say, this is where Christ is calling us to draw near in compassion, uh, to listen to... Uh, because in that place, I, I love what you just said, Becky. Yeah, maybe it's not about changing their mind or or them changing yours. Maybe it's simply about the act of coming together uh, in mm -hmm. in love in that moment, and 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 what might happen in that is 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 up to God alone, quite frankly. So I, I think that's important for us to to pay close attention to right now. Yeah, this is a hard one. I mean, I think this is a hard and relevant word for us as we as we continue to to live our lives together. Any final uh, any final words or calls to action? What do you think we should do? Tell us, a wise wise one. I'll do mine real quick because I think that was it. Is 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 follow those places of of, of judgment and 
and take those to Christ and, 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 and resist the temptation to go all the way with that judgment and say, you know, I'm, I'm writing this person off and instead use that as a place to draw near, uh, whether that means to engage in conversation or in, in relationship or to just educate yourself, listen, pay attention, you know, be in prayer around those places. I, I'd say, let those places guide you closer to others and to Christ. Oh, that's good. Uh, no, I'll, I'll go back to, you know, the simple act of going the second mile. Well, I wouldn't say yeah. a simple act, but the hard act of going the second mile, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, that if, if there's things that are required of you, uh, especially socially, right? Like socially, there's things that are required of you. But then if you actually go the second mile, I mean, you'll be, you'll, there, I'm, I'm going to guarantee you will be surprised at what kind of relationships, what kind of conversations, what kind of compassion and love that Christ shows you uh, through those people that you are, you have been judging, you know? And so um, open your hearts, open your hearts, open your minds to what Christ will do through these people that uh, maybe that you have not liked, that you have judged all your life or that you, you that you continue to judge, but, um, you know, go that second mile. Yeah, I think for me, it's that call to mercy and compassion too. And the call to remember we're not right, you know, uh, mm -hmm. let God be God. I think, especially in that don't give what is holy to dogs and don't throw your pearls before swine. I think what that's really pushing us to remember is that God is the one in charge of how how the, the transformation of the heart that we don't have to, mm -hmm. yeah. to try to feel like we're in charge of everything, but to just be in relationship. And it just makes me it makes me laugh because I think of how many times Peter and I look at each other and say like, leave room for the wrath of God, honey. Like it's a almost daily occurrence that we, we feel about that. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Because it's just, it's so natural for us to not enter with mercy and compassion and to let our hearts be broken. So I think that's the call for us today. Austin, do you want to pray for us? Love to. Thanks you guys. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, we, we thank you for your word to us and the ways that it continues to shape us and change us. We do pray that you would um, continue to lead us into places of compassion and connection uh, and, and mercy with one another. Uh, Lord, we confess that, that at times we do not feel up to these, that task. And so we, we need your guidance uh, and your, your love uh, to do that. So, be with us now as, as we go. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
of today's service, I made the comment that uh, no matter where you're coming from, whether this has been a great week or a difficult one, a month full of hope or a month full of anxiety and despair, all the same, God calls us to God's side. God assures us that God is with us and loving us and bringing us closer uh, to the people that God has called us to be. And so as we join our voices now in prayer, as we say the Lord's Prayer together, uh, allowing those words to echo throughout the generations into our lives and our day today, uh, we bring all of these things to God's feet, knowing uh, that, that our prayers are heard and that the God who loves us continues uh, to assure us of God's presence. In this time, we also uh, pass the virtual offering plate. And so if you are... So inclined, there's the Give Now button on our website, or you can mail in checks. We appreciate the ways that we are continuing, all of us, to continue to support uh, the work that God is doing here at RPC. Let's continue that work together as we offer our, our resources, but also our lives in this time. Let's pray together and then join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we call on you because we know you will answer. We ask now, hear us as we pray. We praise you with every word that we speak, with every moment when we fall silent. We ask that you'd sustain us this day, that you'd forgive our sins, that you'd bring us close to live in the goodness of your holy presence. In the midst of this holiday season, which is rapidly approaching, we pray that you would soften our hearts so our lives can bear your fruit Keep our eyes set on you so that the, the busyness and the pace of the weeks ahead don't sweep us into places of worry or frustration or bitterness or scarcity. Let everything we do overflow with blessings for your people. We pray these things for those that we love, bringing you the prayers of our lives this day. In this space, I encourage you to lift up the names of of those that we love who need our prayers this day. In all of these ways, Lord, these ways both spoken and unspoken, we pray for your wisdom to guide us, for your love to define us, and for your fellowship to unite us as one. These are not empty words, Lord, but challenging, uh, important works that we say yes to as we follow you. We pray all of these things in your holy name, praying the prayer that you taught us to pray. 
saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, dear friends, it is once again uh, the end of our service, which we know means uh, the continuation or the ongoing process of our lives of discipleship, which continue beyond uh, the confines of this service. So I encourage you to join us for uh, our Zoom coffee hour, to uh, join us throughout the week for, for Bible study and for classes, all of these things as we continue to follow Jesus together. And as you go out from this place, if you've heard nothing else, hear these words. Go from this place assured that Christ loves you more than you can possibly imagine. And so wrapped, wrapped like a blanket in that great love, live freely, serve lavishly, forgive abundantly. Go from this place to love and serve the Lord. Amen.